This is the second of six videos on the strategies from anger. And we will continue from a few seconds from where we left off. Let's get to it. So, and, and during that time, you know, my anger caused issues for me as well as before I went to prison and juvenile hall, juvenile placement and such. And the biggest change that happened to stop me from going through those same situations and getting in trouble was changing the way that I thought about situations and reframing the situations and looking at it from a different perspective. Your thoughts and behaviors can either fuel your emotions or they can reduce them. So if you want to shift your emotional state away from anger, you can change what you're thinking and what you're doing. Without fuel, the fire inside you will begin to dwindle and you feel calmer. A lot of us, we have a tendency to obsess over whatever it is that we're thinking about. So if you're thinking about something that someone said to you that you felt to be uh, disrespectful or um, you're thinking about something that was done, maybe somebody cheated on you or whatever the case is, the more you think about that situation and the more that you feel like a victim due to that situation, the angrier you will tend to get over that situation. So it's helpful sometimes to reframe the situation in another way to, and, and it's not so much that you're trying to minimize it or not uh, stand up for yourself, but again, it's not helping you to continue to escalate your anger. The best method for managing anger is to create an anger management control plan. Then you'll know what to do when you feel, uh, when you start feeling upset. So again, so when you're making an anger control plan or anger management plan or anger relapse plan, whatever you choose to call it, um, you want to have this plan in place, um, obviously prior to you becoming angry. And it's something that you want to practice over time so that you begin to realize what things are most helpful for you when you begin to get angry. So uh, some of the things that are going to help us when we are addressing our issues of anger as follows. Identify triggers. While you shouldn't blame people or external circumstances for your inability to keep your cool, understanding things that trigger your anger can help you plan accordingly. So again, you're identifying the things that generally trigger you to anger. And as it says, um, blaming other people, situations, circumstances, or things are not going to help you. They're not going to help you to uh, become less angry. Matter of fact, it will tend to escalate your anger because again, if I think that I'm a victim or somebody's picking on me or, um, or, uh, you know, I don't stand a chance in life, then I'm going to get more angry, right? As I feel that my rights have been violated. So, uh, me thinking, you know, in with a victim mentality is not going to help me to de decrease my anger. So we want to know what are our triggers. Evaluate your anger. Before you spring into action to calm yourself down, ask yourself if your anger is a friend or an enemy. If you're witnessing someone's rights being violated or you are in an unhealthy situation, your anger might be helpful. So again, anger is not always negative, right? So we get angry over injustices, right? So like if we see uh, a little child being hurt or whenever we, you know, hear something on the news about, you know, somebody that, uh, that harmed a child or someone like that, or you see a friend or a loved one being picked on, or maybe you might even see a random person just being bullied, right? You know, we don't, uh, like that. And, you know, we start feeling a certain way or feeling a certain sense of anger due to the injustice. And sometimes, or generally, it gives us the motivation to stand up and speak up and say something about what we feel to be an unjust situation. And even a lot of the, the problems that we see in society today, 
right? A lot of the, the protests and um, different situations and riots and things that we see are stemmed from people being angry about uh, different situations. Some of it justified, some of it's not. But even if our anger is justified, there's still a way to manage that anger and deal with it and address injustices in a way that doesn't cause or uh, further harm or aggravate the situation. In these cases, you might proceed by changing the situation rather than changing your emotional state. Sometimes your anger is a warning sign that something else needs to change, like an emotionally abusive relationship or a toxic friendship. So again, if you get angry, so one of the biggest things that we want to change is the way that we think about situations and being able to manage our emotions appropriately so that we don't let our anger spin out of control. But sometimes it's such that it's the situation itself that needs to change, right? So if it's an injustice or again, like it mentioned here, a toxic relationship or a toxic friendship or something like that, that may be the situation that needs to be changed and not so much our emotions. And our anger may be just what we need to step up and either um, confront the situation so that we can try to rec rectify our differences and come to a reasonable agreement so that we can have a more healthy relationship or dissolve the relationship, right? But we need to be able to stand up and sometimes anger is our power. And I have a tendency to refer to uh, my anger as my demons. I call it my demons, right? And even in my um, in my logo, you know, anger management, I'll have anger management tame your demons. And that's what it's about, right? Because I'm not trying to uh, get rid of my demons. I'm taming my demons so that um, so that I'm not doing things that are going to cause problems for me or the community. But at the same time, I'm not totally trying to get rid of uh, my anger uh, because I'm still going to use that in times of necessity or, or when uh, it calls upon it and I'm angry about a situation or I don't like the way that something's going and it's going to be my strength or my courage to stand up and do something about it. Um, you know, for example, I don't like, uh, you know, the current political climate and the way that um, certain, or you say political policies are being uh, represented in the community in general and, and, and for minorities in particular, right? And, you know, a lot of people are angry over the situation, but I think that, uh, Sometimes we're, we're getting angry about uh, the wrong things or we're given the wrong interpretation because unfortunately now we're not just given the news. We're given someone's uh, interpretation or someone else's narrative of what we should think about it and who we uh, should consider our to be our friends or who we should think that are on our side. Being angry might give you the courage you need to take a stand or to make a change. And that's exactly what I'm talking about.